Well, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Oh, what a glorious day. We are in another day in the Lord's presence, and I really mean that. You are in the Lord's presence. There is not a moment that you are not in the sight of the Lord. There is not anywhere you can hide or be taken where you are not in his presence because he is with you always. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, don't be afraid because he is there with you in the moment. Now, I have had the nicest dream, the most exciting dream I've ever had. Normally the Lord gives me the the warning dreams, the the doom and gloom, not doom and gloom, but, you know, the dreams that are, are a warning to us all of bad things to come or bad things happening, explanations of what's going on around us, those sort of dreams. I have been praying for one of our dear beloved and they've been having an experience. I will not go into that because it's not my right to speak of somebody else's experience. But in their experience, I I took it to the Lord because sort of it was, it seemed to be answering one of my prayers for them. And so I took it to the Lord. What did it mean? What was really happening? Well, the answer wasn't exactly in the way I would like an answer that's spot on. Well, here it is, Robin. You know when, oh, I think it was Daniel had a dream and he said, well, what does this mean? And and he was told exactly what it meant. <laughs> that's not what happened. But something far more wonderful happened and I think it, it will both answer that question but give us all because I asked him is there anything he wanted me to say to you today and this was so it was a very quick dream and I know I talk a lot so I'm going to try not to do too much talking but just give it to you I think you will see exactly where we are when I give you the dream because at first I'm what on earth is going on and then when I woke up I thought that's what that was okay first of all in the dream I am somewhere else I don't know where I was but I was conscious of not being where I ended up I was somewhere else and then the very next thing I'm I notice is I am in a place with a lot of other people. I seem, I think I was on my own at first, but suddenly I am in a place in what seemed to be a big room that had, um, there was, there was a big open room, but then there was a little alcove that went along the side wall of it. There was a little alcove that only went a short way, like a little mini tunnel almost, but just the same height and that is the room. It seemed to go about, <clears throat> I'd say about 14 feet to the right and it was about six feet deep, came up and the wall that was in, seemed to be within the room making this out, this little channel, on the other side of that door of that wall was a door but it was set back this is so strange it was set back and the room then continued on but at that door now this room is full of people milling around and then there be, there was this door and for some reason we were very worried about people outside that door so this was a safe place and it wasn't safe outside that door. But then someone came to the door and we knew it, but we didn't hear knocking. This is it. We didn't hear knocking, but we knew there was someone there. And everyone's saying, no, don't let them in, don't let them in. 
don't open the door. We're safe, don't open the door. And somebody did go to the door and next thing you know, the door is open and there were three people there, three beings were at that door. I'll tell you why I called them beings in a minute. There were three beings at that door and I didn't hear any conversation but there was obviously conversation going on because the person stepped aside and just let them through. But it wasn't just three. Suddenly it was like a river coming through the door. And everyone was just in amazement. And next thing we knew, we weren't standing. We were sitting at a beautiful long table. I, everyone was sitting at, at this lovely table. Uh, oh, there were a few people just standing against the wall. They were frightened. But, but I found myself at this table. And when I looked, these beings were all around us. They had filled in like like a river flowing and we became like an island in the river. And it was three, three deep of them. They filled the space with them so that the room was now, we were sh shoulder to shoulder with them and they filled every space of the room and and a lot of people were frightened, but but everyone was calm in their fear. And then I kept looking to see, are these good, are these bad? What What is going on? I couldn't quite understand, what am I seeing? And I looked and they were all serious. They weren't cheerful, oh, how are you? They were, they were serious. They were on a job. They were serious. They weren't communicating. No one got to say anything to them they were on a job and then I looked I kept looking into the faces to see if any of them will show any communication and they weren't and then I just kept looking and looking and then two off to my left in the crowd of them looked at me as if we see you looking and they didn't smile. That's, they didn't smile with their face. And yet I felt a smile. Their faces didn't seem to change, but I felt a smile within them. And it was like they said, I didn't hear anything, but it was as if they said, it's all right. We're here for you. And we were totally safe. We were, it was like we got wrapped in bubble wrap, you know, that, that air filled plastic wrap that stopped you moving. We couldn't move. They were that thick amongst us. We couldn't move. We could just sit there. And they were comforting us. But they were surrounding us like bubble wrap. <laughs> um, and at the moment, that one or oh, those couple that sort of gave me this um, piece, they looked off to my right, so straight ahead for them. They just looked straight ahead and up a bit. And so I followed their gaze and nobody else was looking. No. The funny thing is, I'm not sure anybody else saw any more than the three because they didn't seem to sense that they were crowded in. And then I looked, I followed the sight of where they were looking off into the distance. And there on my right hand side, at the end of the long, long room, I looked up and the wall, the end wall wasn't there. And it was so light. And I was looking and that was the sky. And this beautiful cloud appeared. It was, it was whiter than white. It was I know there are different um, people have different descriptions of the cloud, but this cloud that I saw, the reason it was white, I don't know, but it was whiter than white. It was like beyond white. 
and it's lovely and thick and heavy and f beautiful shapes to it. And the sky was beautiful. It, I don't even know if it was blue. It was just beautiful. And the next thing I saw was, how did it, it must have been that hand because it was up like that. And it, this hand came down, so I saw the back, that I saw the back of this hand, but it wait, no, it was up, it was up, I, it was like that. I saw this hand come down, but I I couldn't see the fingers. I saw the the back of it like that, and this hand oh look that, <laughs> and then this hand came down out of the cloud up to about the up to about the almost the whole of the forearm came down out of the cloud and then the hand just opened and out of it came I it's as if I could see wind coming it was like visible wind it was scrolls and squirrels and it was going all over the place it was it was whooshing out it was just whooshing out and it just went everywhere. It It's as if it filled the whole world because there was so much. I couldn't see how it didn't fill the whole world. It was just constantly coming out of the hand and it was whooshing. And, but I could see it in like cartoon lines even. But it wasn't cartoon lines. I don't know how to describe it, but that's the best way. As if an artist was drawing these moving moving winds but it was just thick like soup and it was it was glorious so I saw this rushing and filling everywhere then the arm came down again it had retreated into the cloud then it came down again and it opened again and this time there were things I couldn't make head nor tail of um, it was just all sorts of shapes coming down. Oh, it was, it was things that were close to me, but it was, it was like parcels. Um, it was, it was like someone else's dreams coming down and I can only put it that maybe it's dreams and visions, that even though we're having them now as if as if that was going to be much more, much more, as if they're going to spill out now. And I, I don't know, I don't know, because I, I don't know what came out of that hand. It was just so different. Then it went up again, and then it came down a third time. And the third time it came down, it was, again, strange shapes and things, but this time they were like parcels. Um, it was, and all I could think of was, it's the gifts of God. They were like gifts coming down. And out of his hand was spilling all of these, and I'm, and I'm, yeah, I'm sort of not up, but I'm, I'm sort of raised a bit, calling out, it's God, it's Him, it's Him, and every nobody's looking; they're all sort of just not seeing what I'm seeing, and I'm looking at. It's him. He's here. It's him. That's him there. And I'm, I'm so excited but so confused. Why aren't they reacting? Because there he is. It's his hand there. And it was spilling out all these things. And I was just so filled with absolute joy. I've never had a dream where it was absolute joy. And this was absolute joy joy knowing that he's there and he's he's pouring something out onto us he's pouring it out onto the world we're in this room but he's pouring this out 
onto the whole world. And it was gifts. He was giving gifts to the whole world. And I, I'm i sort of... I, I was so confused. But at that moment I woke up when I'm sort of cheery God and, and, and I woke up and I woke up so happy. I've never been so happy when I woke in the middle of the night. And then I, I asked, what was that? <laughs> and though I don't know the whole of it, he did not give me a full understanding, as you can see. But I, from what I understand of what I saw, it was encouragement. It was total, absolute encouragement to his, his people. It's... We were totally surrounded. That was angels. And he wants everyone to know, including the, the dear one that I spoke about. He wants everyone, though, to know we are surrounded. We are surrounded. He has poured out his army onto the earth. Oh, he poured out. He poured out his army onto the earth that we who believe, no matter what we go through, our soul is in good hands. Our soul now has a hedge. He has built a hedge around us. But the hedge is the forces of the angels of God. You have been surrounded and it is shoulder to shoulder. You haven't got... We used to know that we had one or two angels that wrote in the books and stood for us. He has now poured out his his army and you are surrounded by his army. Oh, God be praised. You have an army looking after you. So no matter what happens, you know your soul, he will not let go of you. Your soul is in his hands. That's the number one. Now, the next thing was, you have to let them in. You see, they were at the door waiting. But you had to let them in. Now, I don't know it, how that happens. I don't know what that means. But until they were let in, they were outside the door. So, whether it's, I think it's through prayer, let them in. Accept that of God. Don't say, I can do this on my own. You can't do this on your own. And remember, the foolish brides and the wise brides, the wise brides were there when the friends of the king came for them. The foolish brides didn't. The wise brides let them in. Remember that? They came and the girls opened the door and then they were surrounded because the the Hebrew wedding situation in, in those days was the has the betrothed man he would they would make a covenant, they would have a glass of wine, he would say, I will not drink of this wine until we are together again and he would go off and he would prepare a home for her and he would be coming back when his father had said it's time and it was only time when the young man or the betrothed made the home suitable for her he couldn't just throw up a rubbish place it had to be worthy and the father would come in and check is this place worthy your father is making sure it's, Jesus is the master carpenter making it, but his father is making sure he's doing a good job because he has to come and say, it's ready. Then he tells Jesus, okay, you go and get her. So until it's ready, but when it's ready, 
the friends of the groom go before him and they go and surround and lift, they lift the bride up into the air on a chair, whatever, they, and she is paraded to the groom. That was the old wedding, the beautiful weddings. That was it. The girl was received by the friends and taken. He had come just as, um, oh, was that, was that Isaac? He came and he was looking, uh, the friend, I can't remember the story. One, um, the, the, the helper was sent to gather a bride and he brought her back, but the, the son had come in from the mountains and from the, the herds and he came and he met her part way. Do you remember that story? So the helper, the friends, went and collected her and brought her. He wasn't at home. He had come and he met them on the journey. That is all part of the bridal path. It's beautiful, but it's happening. It's happening soon. But here we have, this is all playing out now. The wise brides were ready. So when they opened up, there were the friends of the groom. The other girls had gone off because they didn't have the oil. Important, keep your oil filled. Important. Now, so there we are. We've let them in. They're ready to surround us and protect us until he comes. Then we see all of the gifts of God being poured out. The the wind, all I can think of there is that whooshing wind. The word in Hebrew for wind and air is exactly the same as the word for spirit. It's ruach. Forgive my pronunciation. But the ruach was poured out and the Bible says in the end days, I will pour my, out my spirit on all flesh. So at the moment, the spirit is only on the bride. He's about to spill it out on all flesh. That means he's about to interfere with the Hebrews because they are part of all flesh. They are going to see the one they pierced. He is pouring out his spirit, but not just on them. He's going to pour it out. We have seen Muslims coming to faith, Hindus coming to faith. We have seen all peoples around the world coming to faith. He is about to pour out his spirit in such a great way. And he also said, he did, he said it. And I will, you're, well, we know old men and women will have dreams and you young ones will prophesy. I think that's what that box of, of things that I couldn't see because they weren't for me. They weren't mine. And they were pouring out. I think that was going to go amongst all the nations to bring them to Christ. And then the third thing that I saw, the third hand, was the gifts. And did he not say in the last days, I will pour out. At the moment they are being given and we ask for them, but he is about to pour out the gifts of the Spirit. So the Spirit went out, the dreams and visions are going out, and now he's prepared the way for it. He's going to give the gifts. Now the people have seen the Spirit. They will have the dreams and know it's true, and then they will be given the gifts, the worldwide. At the moment, it's small pockets of people. Why now? Why now? Up until now, you have been able to listen to people like me, little people in their homes, but we could tell you what we saw. We could tell you what we've heard because of this. 
now think of places like Israel, Gaza. The whole Middle East is about to go into internet blackout. There are people escaping Albania. Uh, but no, but the Albanians are being kicked out. The Christian Albanians that have lived for decades in, I guess they turned Christian instead of Muslim, Abbasian, oh, I, I can't say these words. See, we're not seeing this, are we? But I saw a news article yesterday and it was a footage of a road full of people, over 200,000 people leaving an area, a Muslim area. You don't leave your home just for pressure. You leave your home if violence has started against you. The Muslims from the, the country have kicked out, they called it, kicked out. You only do that with violence. You can't kick someone out of their home unless you use violence. And they're not talking about that. So over 200,000 Christians are now on the road leaving the country of their birth and flooding into the neighbouring country of Albania. Albania is a Christian country, but now a Muslim overlorded country is pushing their Christians out into another small country that's Christian. Those people haven't got internet. They don't know what's what we know. They can't hear what we hear. People all around the world in jungle areas that don't have. Yes, at the moment, everyone's got it. But can you see how the turmoil is being put out? Google now has the right to... Um, what do you call that, censor anything, anyone in the world because they own the internet. The governments have said they want to shut down any speech that's against them worldwide when the one world government which is already in power really takes over, they will restrict access to information. That means you won't hear from people like me but when he pours it out on all flesh, there are going to be a lot of stories going on. There are going to be a lot of questions being asked. And people will be given the choice. Choose now whom you serve. And when they choose him, he is pouring in the gifts. The spirits going out convicting the dreams and visions are going out teaching what they can no longer get access to he's going to speak to them in their dreams and visions they are going to speak to one another and people are going to choose and then those that have chosen the gifts of the Spirit will be added to them. Isn't that the most wonderful thing to, to know? We knew it was going to happen, but here it is. It's happening. He's opening the sky. He's putting his hand out. I, I, I just got a tingle all over. I got goosebumps. But I, I'm not saying that this means that today is the rapture or anything like that. That's not what I'm saying. I don't know if that us being in that room was that we were raptured. I don't, and sitting at a table, I don't know. I, I wasn't given the answer to that, except to know that we were safe and the angels are with us now. That is true. The angels are surrounding you if you let them in. If you say, Lord, please surround me with your angels, I accept the gift. Say it, I don't know, that's not my, don't use my words, 
but the heart. Use use your heart. Don't do it as a ritual. Oh, I must go and open the door and come on in. That's not that's not God. He's not physical doors. Jesus is a door. Open the door to Jesus and say, Thank you, Lord, for this gift. In your words, in not in my words, but thank him and say, I accept this gift. And be confident that when you've opened that door, through Christ our Lord, our Saviour, the door, know that when you do that, you are shoulder to shoulder with these angels and they're there to save your soul. Your soul is saved, but they're there to protect it from all the slings and arrows that are coming your way. Isn't that beautiful? God be praised. He died on a cross for you. There is nothing he wouldn't do for you. God is pouring out all of these things and it's going to be worldwide. So if your internets go out, if your phones go out, do not be afraid. Know that he is in control and he is pouring this out and it could be onto your neighbour that hates you. It could be onto to a gang of, of hoodlums. It could be to a group of terrorists and someone in that group is going to become one of your brothers and sisters. And you won't necessarily know it. They may be killed for changing if they were of a different religion. But it's going to be the way he is coming, the way is coming. He has always been here. But he is about to show the way to all flesh. And they have to choose, just as you had to choose. So, you know Jesus died for you. You know he came from heaven. You know he was the only begotten son of, of God. You know that he was fully man, fully God. You know that he was born of a virgin, that he walked the earth. He had no sin in him. Though tested of Satan, just as we all are, he never gave in. He never was tempted. He never accepted the temptation. You know that he had no sin in his life. And he healed and he walked among people and saved them. And you know that when he went on that cross, he took your burden. He took my burden. He took my sins and your sins and the sins of everyone on this planet. He took them onto his self, everyone that had been and will be. He took everyone's sins on him. He took our punishment that we deserve. He took it. He died and he rose again on the third day and he was seen of a multitude. And then he rose into heaven to be seated with his father, but he is still with us. Now he is here and we are about to see things we never thought we would see. But be of good cheer because what we see when we go to the Lord, can you imagine how we will be able to cheer on those that come after us? Those that go through the great tribulation. We will be there before the great tribulation, but we will have the sorrows. The sorrows are here, my loves. Let nobody tell you they're not. Do you not feel sorrowful for the world? Do you not feel the birth pangs? We are at that point now. Jesus is coming soon. Until he gets here, he has sent his helpers with us. He has sent his angels, his friends, to surround us, to keep us safe. He is pouring out all the things he promised. There, It's happening. He is pouring it out. So fear not. Internet gone. 
phone's gone, communication gone, you know, if you saw this, you know what he is doing now. And you also know that he's coming soon. God bless you. May his make his face to shine upon you and give you peace and understanding beyond anything you can imagine. But peace I give you, he said. His yoke is not heavy. The burden is not heavy that he gives us because he loves you. He died for you. He went to prepare a place for you and when it is prepared, he will come for you. But in the meantime, he said, I will not leave you an orphan. And he has now doubled down on our protection. If you feel something around you, it's your angels. Your soul is under God's care and protection. You put on your armour and join the fight, but you know you have the best army in the world with you. God bless you. He loves you that much. I love you. God loves you. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. He's come, he's come, he's come. Amen. God bless you. Pray for Israel. Pray for their opening of their eyes. Remember, they were blinded in part for us. We wouldn't be here in this situation if Israel had not been blinded for us. In part only. They have come against a horrible threat. But God is in control. You know the end by what God has told you. Read if you're worried about Israel. Read and you will know exactly what's going to happen to them, with them and for them. But also understand that there are evil within the ranks of Israel. There are evil people who are working for Satan. They were there in the day of Jesus the Pharisees, remember he said, you sons of, of serpents, you vipers, brood. They're still there. And then you have the righteous. In the other faith, the, the people coming against them, you know you have met some absolutely beautiful people who are in that faith. But they're not faithful to the faith. That faith, let me just say this, I I read the, their book years ago. It shocked me. It starts out very nice, but as it progresses, it they call it, um, he, oh, no, I can't remember the word, but he abrogates. He abrogates all the nice things, it means he cancels them out later on. You've got that for that season, then he abrogates that. And whereas you used to like these people, now you kill them wherever you find them. That's what he says about the people of the book. Jews and Christians were called the people of the book. And it says, and you must kill them wherever you find them. They've gone out throughout the world, the militants, ready to kill us wherever they find us. They are coming against Israel now. The Christians, they've always been skirmishers. But now they've got themselves in masses all over the world. They are starting that part of their jihad. Things are going to get very nasty in the future. Very nasty. But remember that amongst them are people who haven't read their book. And they're living more a Christian life without realising it. You've realised they are they are actually living more like a Christian than their own book because they're not living what their book says. If you find a nice Muslim, a genuinely nice Muslim, they're not following their faith. They're following a fairy story. They haven't read their book. 
they don't even read and understand the language. And they're told, you don't ask questions. If you think something's wrong, you're not allowed to ask questions in their faith. God said to us, ask, and it shall be answered. Their God said, don't ask. If you ask, you won't stay faithful. He knew if they found out the truth of their own religion, they wouldn't be in their religion. He told them it's a sin to ask questions. So they don't. Our God knew. Ask questions. Don't go blindly into this. Either you accept me or you don't. Ask and you shall. the answer will come. Be Bereans, we were told. Study all things. Don't just do it in blind faith. Don't just accept what someone says. Study to make sure that's true. That's the difference between the God of light and the God of darkness. Our God wants you to know him. He wants you to accept him as he is. And he wants you to love him. When you come near to him, he will draw near to you. Their God never comes near them, you know that? Their God comes down in the middle of the night and then goes back to heaven. He comes down and has a look at them and goes back to heaven. What's that about? And they think that's a good God? Their God says to them, I am the best of all the deceivers. That's a good God? They don't understand because they don't ask questions. But when God starts pouring out all of this onto them, those that had a little, I wonder what's right and wrong, they're going to just start communicating with one another. This happened to me. Did you see this? Did... They don't need the book anymore. They don't need us telling them anymore because we won't be there to tell them. God's going to do it all. Isn't that wonderful? Anyhow, I, I went off on a tangent there. Sorry about that, guys. I love you. God loves you. He's coming for us soon, but in the meantime, we are going to see such miracles. Not necessarily we're going to like everything we see, but he's pouring it out now. So don't be worried if all the internets go off. Don't be worried. Everything is on schedule. I don't know when these are all going to go, but obviously it's not that far off or he wouldn't be telling us don't worry about it because when this goes, he's he's there. He's already there. He's doing it now. He is going out now. God be praised. Jesus, come soon. Maranatha, Lord God, please come soon. And may we stay full of the joy of knowing that he loves us and he is with us and he will never forsake you. God bless you all, my darlings. Amen. Amen.